Hey, what's up guys, it's James Diamond here, and welcome back to another FL Studio 11 Tech Tip video here on Sonic Academy. This is going to be the last episode in the series, it's going to be possibly quite a short one. It's just going to be showing you a few extra little tips that hopefully help speed up your workflow and when working with larger projects. The first tip I'm going to show you is something I actually only found out uh, a little while ago. It's a really useful technique, and it's the way that we can render down a section of the track, which then automatically inserts it into the track as audio. So for example, if we wanted to render down this loop, and then we want to turn that into an audio, this four bar, and then for the FL Studio to automatically insert it into these four bars, we simply highlight what we want to render. We click on our loop, solo it in the mixer channel, then we hit this button down here, which is ARM disk recording. Then we do the command Alt R, which brings up this rendering box, and then we can change our bitrate and then you hit start. And as we can see, it has rendered it into the track automatically. It's worth noting though, but that by default, it will render it into your recorded folder on FL Studio, and that's the folder that all recorded sounds go into, whether it be through this method or through a microphone. So in order to change that, we need to go to Options, Project General Settings, we need to hit the data folder up here. And we go into our FL Studio 11 main folder, projects, and then you click onto the project file folder that you've already got set up. I found that this sometimes is a little bit strange and it won't actually set the project file automatically. So sometimes you'll have to set the project file, click OK. Would you like to save? Yes. And then sometimes you might have to close down your project and restart it again, and then it will have saved it into the correct folder. The next tip is when we're working on the mixer channel. And for example, you've got a bus setup. In this case, I've got the bus for the two leads. So I've got the lead one and lead two, and they are both linked to the lead bus. So let's just highlight the section. It could be a pain sometimes when you want to highlight multiple sounds or multiple mixer channels which are within a bus and you right click onto the solo button and you'd have to then left click onto the next one in order to get both of them playing at the same time. This little technique is a way that you can just get them all playing at the same time. So for example, if I right click on the lead bus, nothing happens. We don't hear any sound because these two aren't highlighted, they're not soloed. I would usually have to left click on each of them to solo them. All we need to do is hold Alt and right click on the lead bus solo and everything that is connected to that bus will be soloed at the same time. A very quick little tip here. Sometimes when you're working on large projects and you've inserted lots of different automation and playlist clips, and you've got down here on the left hand side, you've got the blank kind of sections. You can right click and hit auto name, but having to go down maybe 20 different clips to auto name them like that, gets a bit time consuming, simply right click and hit A. Right click A, right click A. And it automatically names and colors it for you as well. This also works if you move a section down to a different place in the track, in the playlist, then you can right click A, right click A, right click A and it automatically renames and colors. And if I remove this section here, if it wants to change it back to a blank track, you just do the exact same, right click A. The next tip is particularly useful when working with audio, when working particularly with drum loops or anything that's got quite a lot of transients. So I've got a couple of drum loops set up here. And for example, I want to cut this last half of this drum loop and get rid of that. And I want to move this drum loop to begin afterwards. Let's just have a quick listen to see how the transition between the two sounds. We can clearly hear and actually see that part of the remaining hit on this drum loop, it, the tail of it is actually still kind of playing and it's clipping just before the next drum loop comes in. So let's just have a quick listen to see how that sounds by itself. Not very nice at all. So there's a couple of ways that we can get rid of this. We can double click onto the loop itself, and then we can go down to the de-clicking section here. 
we change this to transient, we can now see that it's actually allowing part of the loop to continue on, but then there is a extra kind of volume down section to allow it to reduce in volume just before the next hit comes in. So let's have a listen to that. Still not quite right, so let's have a look at some of the other settings. Generic. Still a little bit too much. Smooth. We can hear that that's really allowing too much of the second part of the drum loop to still be playing, so we don't want that. Let's try the crossfade. Clearly that's far too much. Let's go back to the generic. And let's just go to the end of the loop and we're going to highlight over it where the arrow turns into where the kind of cursor bar turns into the left and right arrows. And then we're going to hold Alt and click and hold. And we're just going to drag this along a little bit. So that sounds quite good to me. We've no longer got any of the clicks. So now let's bring the other drum loop back in. That sounded quite nice. No more clicks. And a much smoother transition all around. So that was the last tech tip in the series. I hope you really enjoyed it. Lots of very cool techniques that I use in pretty much all of my tracks every single time I produce a new one. That's it from me. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.